all natural materials just with my flint and steel. But the intentions today were not to start a fire. It's just 45 degrees outside and kind of cold. My intentions today are to film a uh, video for one of my subscribers that asked me what makes a good hammer stone. But I can't deny. That is nice and warm. And I have sycamore here, so it burns a lot hotter than your pine, things like that. It's a harder wood. all natural materials I found in my yard, so I don't have any thistle plant, which would have been great, but I do have a whole bag of cattail that I harvest off the highway just about a block away from my house, and every year I harvest as much as I can. Okay, but on to what we're doing the video for today. Now that we got the fire going. Uh, not too bad. Okay, now I'm going to take you off here and move you over. Now for me, what makes a good hammer stone? A good hammer stone for flint napping. Zoom out here a little bit. Okay. A good hammer stone for me for flint napping is kind of soft. Like this is a. Uh, oh, this is actually like a geode, really. It's more like a quartz sandstone, is what this is. But it's nice and soft. As you can see, it breaks off, you know, relatively easy. So when I'm hitting like obsidian or something like that, this really is what I use. You can also use this as a grinding stone. You don't have to have a separate stone for grinding. I use the same stone that I'm using as the hammer. But for me, it's got to be comfortable in the hand, you know, whereas you can turn it like this here, makes a good striking surface for striking the edge, you know. I don't have any flint rock out here with me right now, but as you can see, it makes a grid for striking the edge. This here is a bigger hammer stone. This is actually uh, granite that a friend of mine sent me from Alaska. This is a good heavy hammer stone for hitting harder stones, more like, uh, I'm going to say like the Texas root beer, things like that. Um, Navaculite, those are a little bit harder to hit than the obsidian because obsidian is a little bit gla more glass-like. Here's another one of those geodes, more like a softball. I use this one here for breaking big stones. You know, if you've got a stone that's 7 to 10 inches, you know, in diameter, and you just want to break it in half, what I do is kind of set a platform and hit it right in the center of it to knock it into two pieces. But this here is the hammer stone I generally use for just about everything, grinding, and it's actually a piece of flint. As you can see right here, the conchoidal fra fracture took off. It's actually a piece of flint, but the way it's shaped, I don't end up knocking flakes off this more than I do the uh, obsidian or Navaculite, whatever I'm working at the time. But for me, really, what a good hammer stone is, is just something that's comfortable in the hand and relatively a soft stone or a hard stone, just depending on what you need. Um, here's another one. This is strictly sandstone here, or limestone, whatever you want to call it. It's more like a limestone. But this is another one that's, you know, good and comfortable in the hand. I got good control over it. There are several different areas on it that I can change to a bigger one right down to hitting something smaller. So really, it's just all about what works for you. Make it good and comfortable in the hand. That way you're not you know, overwheeling it. Like this one here, like I said, this one here for me knocking big rocks apart. Knock them into two pieces. I like to conserve as much rock as I can. So, Okay, well, I hope this helps you, buddy. I'm sorry I did not... Uh, I wrote your, the, you, your subscriber name down, but I didn't get it, so I'll just post it as a link on the side of the uh, video there, and then I'll link this to you as well. Hope this helps. Now remember, if you are not prepared today, you're not prepared tomorrow.